Dharma Jewel Platform Sutra With the Commentary of Tripitaka Master Hua English Translation by the Buddhist Text Translation Society Chapter 8 Sudden and Gradual Commentary Sudden refers to the immediate understanding of a principle. You may be suddenly enlightened to a principle, but until you have been certified as one who is fully enlightened, you still must cultivate that principle gradually by putting it into practice in everyday life. Sutra While the patriarch was staying at Paolin Temple in Tzaoshi, the great master Shenxia was at Yuchuan Temple in Qingnan. At that time the two schools flourished and everyone called them, Southern Neng and Northern Xiu. So it was that the two schools, Northern and Southern, were divided into sudden and gradual. As the students did not understand the doctrine, the master said to them, the Dharma is originally of one school. It is people who think of North and South. The Dharma is of one kind, but people understand it slowly or quickly. Dharma is not sudden or gradual. Rather it is people who are sharp or dull. Hence the term sudden and gradual. Nonetheless, Shensio's followers continually ridiculed the southern patriarch, saying that he couldn't read a single word and had nothing in his favor. But Shensio said, he has obtained wisdom without the aid of a teacher and understands the supreme vehicle deeply. I am inferior to him. Furthermore, my master, the fifth patriarch, personally transmitted the robe and dharma to him, and not without good reason. I regret that I am unable to make the long journey to visit him, as I unworthily receive state patronage here. But do not let me stop you. Go to Tzaoshi and call on him. Commentary You all remember Shensiu, the great master who was obsessed with the deadly ambition to be a patriarch. He was an intelligent man, and yet he couldn't cut off his desire for the patriarchate. In the South, the sixth patriarch taught the sudden dharma to a flourishing assembly of over a thousand people. Shensiu, in Qingnan, was busy teaching gradual dharma to an even larger crowd of over 10,000 people. Originally, Shensiu had about 200 followers, but every day more and more people came. However, everyone knew that the fifth patriarch had transmitted the robe and bowl to Huaineng in the south. In spite of the fact that Shensiu had been teaching master under the fifth patriarch and was extremely well educated, he did not have the transmission. Still, Shensiu's disciples advertised him as the sixth patriarch and finally even sent an assassin to try to kill the master and seize the robe and bowl. Because of the division into northern and southern schools, students of the way did not know where to turn. Should they study with the sixth patriarch? He was illiterate and sometimes. His teachings seemed to contradict the scriptures. On the other hand, Shensio didn't have the robe and bowl. Seeing their dilemma, the master said, there is only one dharma. People may come from the north or south but there is. Actually only one non-dual dharma door. Intelligent people understand it all of a sudden and stupid people come to understand it gradually, but the Dharma itself is neither sudden nor gradual. Still, Shensio's men constantly made fun of the sixth patriarch. Hey, look at him, they said. He can't even read. The southern school disciples are following an illiterate. That is perfectly ridiculous. What could they possibly learn from him? Thus they slighted the patriarch and his disciples, saying that they were ignorant, not having even one doctorate among them. Shensio said, don't talk like that. He's an enlightened man. He has obtained wisdom through his own effort, without the aid of a teacher, and has a thorough grasp of the supreme vehicle. Frankly, I'm not as good as he is, I do not possess his enlightened wisdom. Our teacher, the fifth patriarch, passed the wonderful mind seal dharma onto him, and for a good reason. It was no accident. Shensio was a national master. He and masters Laoan, Qi Xian, and Fa Ju were among the fifth patriarch's ten great disciples. 
As they had received invitations to the imperial palace from Empress Wu Tsitian, they received state patronage. Shen Xiu told his disciples, I can't get away, as I receive state aid here. But don't let me stop you. You may go to Tzao Shi to call on the great master. Actually, Shen Xiu was just testing his disciples to see whether or not they would go. He said that the sixth patriarch had more virtue than he, but what he really meant was, if you believe in me you won't leave, even though he has more virtue. But if you don't believe, you'll go as soon as I tell you to leave. Go. No one went. Sutra. One day Shen Xiu told his disciple Qi Cheng. You are intelligent and very wise. You may go to Tzao Shi on my behalf and listen to the Dharma. Remember it all and take careful notes to read to me when you return. As ordered, Qi Cheng proceeded to Tzao Shi and joined the assembly without saying where he had come from. The patriarch told the assembly, Today there is a Dharma thief hidden in this assembly. Qi Cheng immediately stepped forward, bowed, and explained his mission. The master said, You are from Yu Chuan, you must be a spy. No, he replied, I am not. The master said, What do you mean? He replied, Before I confessed, I was, but now that I have confessed, I am not. The master said, How does your master instruct his followers? Qi Cheng replied, He always instructs us to dwell with the mind contemplating stillness and to sit up all the time without lying down. The master said, To dwell with the mind contemplating stillness is sickness, not dhyana. Constant sitting restrains the body. How can it be beneficial? Listen to my verse. When living, sit, don't lie. When dead, lie down, don't sit. How can a set of stinking bones be used for training? Qi Cheng bowed again and said, Your disciple studied the way for nine years at the place of great master Xiu but obtained no enlightenment. Now, hearing one speech from the high master, I am united with my original mind. Your disciple's birth and death is a serious matter. Will the high master be compassionate enough to instruct me further? Commentary Qi Chen was a good disciple to Shen Xiu, one of his favorites. You may represent me at Tzao Shi, Shen Xiu said. I cannot go. If I were to go personally, Hui Nen would surely recognize me and not speak the Dharma. Write down everything he says without getting one word wrong. Then bring back your notes and read them to me. When Qi Cheng asked for instruction at Tzao Shi, he didn't say where he was from. I've been here and there, he said, beating around the bush. That day there were several thousand people gathered to hear the Dharma. The sixth patriarch announced, everyone should be careful. There is a Dharma thief hidden in the assembly. Qi Chen pushed his way through the crowd, bowed at the master's feet and said, I confess. I'm a spy. Shen Xiu sent me here. The master explained the Dharma to Qi Chen. Contemplating stillness is a kind of occupational disease, he said, it is not Dhyana. As to constant sitting in meditation, this is a mere constraint on the body. What is the principle behind it? When you eat, just eat, when you sleep, just sleep. Don't lock yourself up. Shen Xiu was just working on his stinking skin bag. He didn't know how to work in the self-nature. That is sickness. The sixth patriarch worked naturally in the self-nature, and he spoke this verse to say. You sit up when you're alive, you lie down when you're dead. Your body's a bone bag composed of four elements, why not work on the self-nature instead? To dwell with the mind contemplating stillness contradicts the principle of the Diamond Sutra, which tells us to produce that thought which is nowhere supported. The sixth patriarch spoke this verse to break Qi Cheng's attachment to Marx. Shen Xiu taught people to dwell with the mind contemplating stillness and the sixth patriarch said that that was wrong. Nonetheless, if you can do it, bit by bit, you will gain benefit. If you always sit and do not lie down, 
although it is not very natural, it will assist your body and mind in cultivation. Then why did the sixth patriarch object to these practices? It was because Qi Chen had just come from Shenxiu and it was necessary to break his attachments before he could properly receive the genuine Buddha Dharma. In cultivation you should not be attached to your work and think, look at me. I really work hard, constantly sitting and never lying down. Such thoughts will obstruct your progress. If the mind dwells, it is attached. In order to be united with the original wisdom of the self-nature, you must produce that thought which is nowhere supported, as the Diamond Sutra says. The sixth patriarch gave Qi Cheng this teaching in order to break his attachments. If you can constantly sit and feel natural and unforced doing so, then go ahead, but do not force yourself. Force is not the way. You should work naturally. Good, you say. Then I don't have to follow the rules. This does not mean that you can ignore the rules. If you lie down when people sit, and sit when they lie down, you are not in accord with Dharma and are just trying to show that you think you are special. In general, you must follow the rules and be natural with yourself as well. But being natural does not mean that you can break the rules. Is this clear? Qi Chen had studied nine years with Shen Xiu. How many years have you studied here? One year. And you think that is a very long time. Cultivators may study for 10, 20, or 30 years with great effort. You can't graduate in just a few months. As soon as the sixth patriarch spoke, his principles entered Qi Cheng's heart like water flowing into water, thus, thus, like milk mixing with milk. There was not the slightest difference between them. The patriarch's heart is my heart, said Qi Chen, and my heart is the patriarch's heart. I am suddenly united with the original mind because our minds are fundamentally one and the same. But I do not know when I will die, Qi Chen continued, and I do not know when I will be born again. This matter of birth and death is most pressing. Please be compassionate and help me understand. Sutra The Master said, I have heard that your Master instructs his students in the dharmas of morality, concentration, and wisdom. Please tell me how he defines the terms. Qi Cheng said, Great Master Shen Xiu says that morality is abstaining from doing evil, wisdom is offering up all good conduct, and concentration is purifying one's own mind. This is how he explains them, but I do not. No, High Master, what dharma of instruction you use. The Master said, If I said that I had a dharma to give to others, I would be lying to you. I merely use expedience to untie bonds and falsely call that samadhi. Your master's explanation of morality, concentration, and wisdom is truly inconceivably good but my conception of morality, concentration, and wisdom is different from his commentary. I don't have any dharmas at all, said the sixth patriarch. I'd be cheating you if I said that I did. I have no special dharma to give to people. Four. Each individual I use an appropriate teaching to untie his bonds. To untie bonds means to break attachments. The attachments of living beings bind them up. I just untie their bonds and set them free of their attachments. Fundamentally this teaching has no name whatsoever, but it is hypothetically called Samadhi. Thus, my view of morality, concentration, and wisdom is special, it is not the same as Shen Xiu's. Sutra Qi Cheng said, there can only be one kind of morality, concentration, and wisdom. How can there be a difference? The master said, your master's morality, concentration, and wisdom guide those of the great vehicle, whereas my morality, concentration, and wisdom guide those of the supreme vehicle. Enlightenment is not the same as understanding, seeing may take place slowly or quickly. Commentary when you become enlightened, in that moment of enlightenment you attain your aim. Understanding, on the other hand, is a gradual process. Thus perception may be sudden or gradual, fast or slow. Sutra 
listen to my explanation. Is it the same as Shen? Siyus. The Dharma which I speak does not depart from the self-nature, for to depart from the self-nature in explaining the Dharma is to speak of marks and continually confuse the self-nature. You should know that the functions of the 10,000 Dharmas all arise from the self-nature and that this is the true morality, concentration, and wisdom. Listen to my verse. Mind ground without wrong, self-nature morality. Mind ground without delusion, self-nature wisdom. Mind ground without confusion, self-nature concentration. Neither increasing nor decreasing, you are Vajra. Body comes, body goes, the original Samadhi. Commentary When I speak the Dharma, said the sixth patriarch, I never stray from the self-nature. When you stray from the self-nature you become attached to marks and confuse the self-nature. All dharmas are composed of the substance of the self-nature and respond with unlimited function. Now, listen to this. Mind ground without wrong, self-nature morality. The mind is like a piece of ground. Whatever you plant in it grows there. If you plant a good cause, you reap a good result in the future, if you plant a bad cause, you reap a bad result. When the mind ground contains no thoughts of greed, malice, envy, or selfishness, it is without wrong thoughts, and that is the morality of the self-nature. Master Shensio said that morality is to abstain from evil, that is almost the same as the sixth patriarch's instructions to clear the mind ground of wrong thoughts. But Shensio gave morality another name, calling it the abstention from evil, while the sixth patriarch spoke of the morality of the mind ground, the morality of the self-nature. Mind ground without delusion, self-nature wisdom. When your mind ground is free of delusion, the conduct you offer can be extremely good, just as Shensio instructed. But Shensio merely passed out names. He did not speak of morality, concentration, and wisdom in terms of the self-nature and the mind ground. Do not plant the causes of stupidity in the mind ground, that is the self-nature's wisdom. Mind ground without confusion, self-nature concentration. When it is without confusion, the mind is purified. Shensio's instructions to purify the mind did not relate concentration to the self-nature, whereas the sixth patriarch always spoke dharma from the mind ground. His dharma arose from the self-nature and did not come from outside. Shensio spoke about external dharmas and was